Hi, I'd like to describe how to make decals for 148th scale model airplanes. I have this 109 F4 flown by Hans Joachim Marseille, and I couldn't find a, a one group of JG27 emblem, this one. And I also wanted to make a new number 14 that was the right shape. And I, I also replaced this cross with one that didn't have black outlines. And I added the swastika and I put Marseille's victory markings, the 100 aircraft and these additional victory marking bars. But I guess I'd like to focus on the Grupa emblem. The first step is to buy some decal paper. It comes in either white or clear. I bought it originally from World of Paper and then from Micromark most recently. It's eight and a half by 11 sheets. It's kind of glossy on one side. This is the white style. And it's made for either a laser printer or an inkjet printer. And I use the laser printers at FedEx. Those printers can do 1200 dot per inch resolution, but not with a eight and a half by 11 size sheet of paper. The size of the paper is much smaller like this one. It's only about two and three quarter inches by 2.1 inches for the high resolution 1200 dpi stuff. I was outputting decals from PowerPoint originally and those settings can be adjusted to increase the resolution from I don't know 100 dpi to 300 dpi max. For things like these German crosses I didn't need a whole lot of resolution. Here's that JG27 one group of emblem but this is a low resolution, 300 dots per inch version of it. What I want to do is create one that's 1200 dots per inch. For the one group of emblem, I found a photograph. What I like to do is stretch the photograph. This looks kind of oval shaped, and I'm looking to make it into a perfect circle. I started with this photograph and I converted it to this. Same thing with this other emblem. Took this photograph and used the GIMP photo editing software to convert it to this, to reshape it, rotate it, and paint it, convert it from black and white to color. Put some of these photographs in GIMP, and what I'd like to do is edit this one. So I'm going to create a separate layer for it. By the way, GIMP is sort of like Photoshop, except it's free. Control C to copy it. So we got the photo into GIMP, and now we need to make it look more circular. I'm going to hit the E key for e e ellipse, and hold down the Shift key to try and get a perfect circle. It doesn't look like a perfect circle. Drag that to the widest part of this oval. it aligned. All right, I think we're in there. Shift S to resize. I'm going to make it asymmetrical dragging. All right, so that's pretty close to a circle. Let me try rotating it a bit. Shift R rotates. Just drag it. I'll make uh, Africa vertical. Okay. Make that official. Now let's add another layer. And I want to make a black ring. I guess first I should do a background. I don't know if you need a background or not, but what the heck. Let's get that circle again. Uh, that's pretty good. Now if I select invert, and I can go pick a color. I 
there's three colors of tan here, and I think I settled on this one most closely matches the paint color on the model. So I'm going to select that. Now I'm just going to paint the background that color. Oh, fill hole selection, paint the background. Now let's create another layer and do a black ring. So for the black ring, that needs to go in the center. So I'll say select invert to uh, select the center of the circle. And let's get a new color that's black. And I'll just duplicate this layer. Let's cut out the center of this black layer. like roughly the the right ring thickness hit the delete key okay now we can change this photo a little bit center it better okay just do that like that and then we need a yellow layer Since I've already duplicated the photo, I'll just call this yellow and I want to paint it yellow. I think I can just replace the light gray with a yellow color. I'll try to limit the area where the yellow goes. The tooth is white, so we'll try to go around that. More teeth. And I should be able to just fill this, let's see, similar colors, and start filling here. Increase the threshold a bit. Guess it's probably too late for that. Okay, so you get the gist of it. We'll just fill all these in until the whole thing, everything that's yellow. And when I get all done, it should look like this. One problem with these decals, you can't print white. So I'm going to put a white decal underneath a clear decal, and this is what the clear decal is going to look like. Now that we've created the decal, we need to get it sized right for the model. So I'm going to export this as a PNG file. Let's see, file, export as. So I'll give it a name and make it a PNG. And back in PowerPoint, this is my exported file. Now I want to make it the same size as the emblem in this photo. I took this photo and did the same stretching exercise I did with the emblem to make the photo look like it's a perfect side view. So now I can copy and paste, Control C, Control V, crop this. Move it over the photo and resize it. It's nice with PowerPoint that you can see through the copied image. Oh, 
Well, it's not that easy to see through. Okay, so I think that's about the right size. So I'm going to put that on a different sheet. Here you can see I've got similar size decals. These are all sized to the right size for my 148th scale model. Now the problem is with PowerPoint, these are only 300 dot per inch resolution decals, and I want to make them 1200 dots. So what I need to do is go back into GIMP, change GIMP. I'm going to select a new project file in GIMP. I've already created and I want to create a layer that's got this low resolution properly sized decals on it so I'm going to go ahead and delete all this in GIMP I want to see what the print size is so since the FedEx printers can do 1200 dots per inch I've already changed this to 1200 dots per inch and correlates to print size of 2.75 inches by 2.124. So I want to create that border within PowerPoint and then start putting decals into that space and see how many I can get into it. Going back to PowerPoint, I'm going to create a rectangle that is 2.75 by 2.124 inches wide width. 2.75 inches wide, 2.124 inches tall. There's my box. Now I have to go back up to where I created that properly sized JG27 emblem. And I'm just going to copy that down here. Put it in the box. And I'll duplicate it. Now I could repeat that and put other decals in here until I filled up this box with what I'm going to print at 1200 dpi. And that's what I did in this previous sheet. So we've got a bunch of decals in there. These are set to be printed at 1200 dpi. So now I'm going to copy those into GIMP. But these are low resolution right now. They're only 300 dpi. So I'm going to put them in here. And I have to resize them to fit this box. Make that uh, symmetrical resize. So now I've got some low resolution signals that are properly sized emblems I meant. So let me go back to my other GIMP project where I've got a high resolution emblem. And I'll copy that. Just do an E to grab that thing. Let me get the right one. Control C to copy. Control V to paste it in here. And now I can drag it over these properly sized objects and try to resize it. So Shift S to resize. I should have really erased uh, the old image so that the blurry edges are gone. Now we got a properly sized 1200 dpi image, and next to that is a 300 dpi image. 
I would do that for each of the decals. Go into the GIMP projects, get the high resolution decal, put it over the properly sized low resolution decal and resize it. And once I do that, it looks like this. It's all high resolution stuff. That looks good. Once we get to this point, it's ready to be export, but it's in the wrong format. It's in the GIMP format. So I've got to export this as a PDF. Export as PDF. That's a good name. So I can hit export and it goes out. And if we go look at that PDF file, we can open it, check out the resolution. That's as far as I can zoom in. So not too bad. I think when it was converted to a PDF, it lost a little bit of resolution, but it still looks pretty good. I can take this PDF file, go over to FedEx, ask somebody who works there to change the printer resolution from 300 DPI to 1200 DPI, then put this into the printer and print it to a decal sheet. I would also want a white version of this. I guess I don't have it here, but I need a white background to put that clear decal over the top of. You can see like for this Mickey Mouse emblem, uh, this is a white background, so I would print this, cut out the gray, and just leave the white part. And then put a, a clear decal, like this one, over the top of the white one. I did want to talk about some other issues with decal covering. I applied some decals that I printed from decal paper over this wing. And you can see some of the transparency issues when two decals overlap. So here it's much whiter in the overlap area, much redder and, well, somewhat redder in the overlap area. It doesn't seem like it made much difference for the black. This is the bare decal with no solvent. See, it uh, hasn't really formed into the flap area that well. With one coat of solvent, the decal is starting to dissolve into the flap area. You can see panel lines going across here pretty well. This is after two coats of solvent. Some of the rivets are visible over the top of the decal. This is what it looked like after applying clear coat. I used a Krylon flat spray on clear coat. Here's another view of the same thing. This is a PNG version of one of my decal sheets. This is only 300 DPI. Here are the decals. The two decals on the left were overlaid. I just soaked the decals in water, slid them off the decal sheet, and here's how they looked on the model. There was an issue with the white decals. There's a small white border around the edge of the decal. The best way to fix that is to put a clear decal over the top and cover up that white border.